Hey, and welcome back to Powerlines Pro, uh, to another tutorial video, and today we're gonna to be going through how to use the NEC clearance tool to make sure that your entire design complies with NESC standards. This will allow you to make sure your conductor complies with all the distance requirements of different surfaces within seconds. We really hope that this tool will make you very productive and work efficiently for your future projects. To get this feature and for any questions related, please reach out to info at powerlinespro.com get back to you as soon as possible. To set up your NESC tool, select Edit. Once you selected Edit, set up your NESC rules. This will allow you to add the NESC ground clearance report to any of your views. I'm gonna add it to this bottom view so I can use it whilst I'm designing. Once you've added your NESC table to your view, you'll see a few different columns. I'm gonna go through these columns first so you have a solid understanding of what's happening behind your computer. So pole one and pole two are labeling the poles involved within the conductor stretch that you're looking at. For example, between pole one and pole four, which are these two poles at the end, it's saying that our inferred surface type is road. That's because I've imported some survey file and the survey points here are defining as road. Now the inferred surface type column is where the software will infer the surface type from the survey points below. But if you don't have any survey points, you can use the surface override column to enter in your own custom surface type. For example, over here I have quite clearly a railway crossing. Now my survey feature points did not pick that up and have instead defined this as a road point. So I can either change my feature points by clicking on here, and you'll see that will automatically update the surface type in the end, or I can type into the surface override column that between pole two and pole one, I have railway as a surface type. Now depending on the surface type you enter, you will have different surface minimum height requirement measurements. For example, if I open up the settings tab here, I can look at the mapping and our railway feature code has 22 feet requirement, the road has 14 feet and water has 12.5 feet. We can enter more rules here if we would like just by following this format and any other type that isn't here will be considered at 10 feet. We can press OK to save that. Now the next column is our conductor class column. This is where we can change the conductor class to apply different cable rules. Now you see that I've already changed my uh, conductor class between pole one and pole two because uh, this conductor here is a communication cable. So I've just typed in communications here and that's applied the cable rule L1, which has a cable extra clearance requirement of 1.5 feet. However, all the other conductors are elect bare and so they have a extra clearance requirement of 4.5 feet. If I click settings here, I can then again look at the mapping. And you can see the different cable rules and their applied measurements here. Now the next column across is the required clearance column. And this will be the total of cable extra clearance and your surface min height. And that will be the overall required clearance uh, measurement that you need between your ground point and your conductor point. And then your ground clearance over here is your actual current measurement. So if we go through the different conductors, you can see that pole one and pole two, uh, our communication cable here, is actually failing our required clearance. And we can see here by the comparison that it's failing by only a few inches. So what we can do is we can select the conductor, we can probably increase the attachment height, uh, both sides to maybe 32 feet. And that will make this pass in the end. You can also do things such as increasing the tension of your cable, now to export your NEC ground clearance preset, you can click any of these export buttons here. You can export it to CSV, Excel, DXF, or GeoJSON. Anyways, thank you for watching this video and I hope that uh, you'll be able to make sure that all your designs are NESC compliant now. Please reach out to info at powerlinespro.com if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.